I'm gonna need all the incense for this video. <laughs> this video probably is gonna be one of the hardest videos that I've ever done because it's about me and my journey and my life and everything. So just bear with me because it's, I've, you know, I've talked about it before, but I've never, I'm like shaking. <laughs> I've never put it in, on the internet. I've never talked about my life and my journey fully to you guys. So, um, yeah. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Ariel Artistry here. And today I have a very special video that you guys requested for a really long time now, actually, ever since I've been on this like yoga meditation, spiritual journey. Um, so I wanted to finally share my journey with you guys. Um, I have my incense burning in the back and I have my favorite crystal. This is a clear quartz to get me through this journey to talk about it with you guys. Um, and this is going to help me reflect and yeah, <laughs> um, I'm excited to share this with you guys. I'm also really, really nervous. So like I said, bear with me. I just wanted to do a few disclaimers too for you guys. Um, there's going to be a lot of trigger warnings in this video. Um, it's going to be raw. I'm going to talk how I normally talk. I'm not going to be beeping me, cursing or anything. It's going to be like really raw me. Um, and I don't want anyone to feel bad for me about my journey, pity me or anything. I'm not looking for anyone to like... I just don't want you guys to feel bad for me because I'm sharing this to help someone that needs help that has been through the same journey as I have. So I just really wanted to share that with you guys. Um, uh, <laughs> so yeah, if you guys don't watch my channel, if you are new here, welcome. Thank you so, so, so much for clicking on this video. Thank you for being interested in my journey. Um, my name is Arielle. I make lifestyle videos and make vlogs i make um yoga videos are coming out soon i just started my yoga teacher training um so that video is also going to be coming soon um i used to do makeup videos um i i don't i've talked about it before like i i love makeup don't get me wrong like i'm not wearing foundation right now so yeah that's been like another thing um i'm clearly getting off topic here right <laughs> um but yeah, um, I'm a makeup artist. I do makeup on other people. I used to do really extravagant, fun looks on myself, but now this is basically what I do. Even if I do put on makeup, like this is my bare minimum. Um, but yeah, so I'm done with that rant. Um, yeah, I just want you guys to, I don't know, en enjoy this journey, I guess. Um, it's taken me a really long time to film this video. I was supposed to film it like maybe three weeks ago, but I really, I wasn't comfortable sharing it online. Even now me talking, like I'm like kind of preparing myself. That's why I'm talking so much. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope it helps you if you're in need of help. Um, I'm here for you. That's why I wanted to create this video. So yeah enjoy <laughs> all right so starting my journey i'm going to oh my god my heart just started racing <laughs> i'm gonna go back to way way back in the beginning i'm not gonna talk too much about my childhood i'm just gonna touch on it briefly um but this is more about like how i got into yoga and spirituality and all of that stuff so yeah, let's start with baby Ariel. <laughs> um, so when I was four, my mom passed away. Um, so I was thankfully raised by my father. And I really do am so, I really am so appreciative for that because he could have, you know, he could have not been there. He could have gave me off to somebody else, but he really wanted to prove to everyone and to himself that he can do it. And he did. He raised me very... He raised me very well. I, I'm i not trying to, another disclaimer, I'm not trying to call out anybody in my family 
this is my feelings and how I feel. If I hurt your feelings, I'm very, very sorry. That's not the intention of this video. The intention of this video is to reach out and just, if somebody needs help, if they're going through the same pattern, then I am here to help, like I said. So um, I don't want to hurt anybody's feeling in this video. This is just how I feel. So my dad raised me the best that he could. Um, and like I said, he did raise me to be who I am today. And I'm very, very, very thankful for that. Um, but when I was little, um, I don't really remember too much because I, I'm still doing some shadow work and I'm still kind of going through all that. Um, if you want me to explain what shadow work is, I can explain that. I'll like, I don't know. I'll just look it up. <laughs> um, so I have blocked out some things. I do remember the day that my mom passed away. That's literally the only thing I remember. And it's crazy because I think this is one of the first, um, like sightings I've ever seen of like a true angel. And I'm just going to touch on that a little bit because I just, I found most of this out like recently. So it's just, it's really crazy to me. Um, so when my mom passed away that day, I remember, um, I was watching TV. I was like obsessed with Barney. Uh, Barney like literally got me through, um, school. My dad told me, <laughs> so I was obsessed with Barney and I just remember sitting there watching Barney. And then I went into my mom's room and I noticed that she was just laying on the bed and she was kind of glowing. So I, I think I looked at her and I smiled and I walked out and, um, they put graham crackers at my height so I can reach them. So that's what I was eating. Um, because it was just me and there, um, me and there, it was just me and her, uh, together because she was supposed to drop me off at school. So I was able to reach my graham crackers. Um, Later on, I told the cops, they asked me what I did all day. I told them I watched Barney. I played with my Barbies, you know, like little girl things. Um, so as I was talking to my dad one day or something, this wasn't recently. Um, he said that she was putting on her stockings and she collapsed. So I didn't see that. I don't remember that when I was younger. I just remember her laying on the bed. She was glowing, looking so radiant. So I think that was the universe... Um, I think that was the universe interpretation of me seeing my mother as an angel instead of me seeing her collapse on the floor, if that makes any sense. So yeah, I, I just remember her in my mind like that. I don't really remember too much about her. I just remember that day. So moving forward, <laughs> um, I was going to a Catholic school, hated it so, so much. I'm not a Catholic school girl. Um, so I convinced my dad that I needed to be in public school because it was, it, I just wasn't for me. I wasn't a Catholic school girl, like I said. Um, so yeah, I was in Catholic school and when I was younger, I was always bullied. I was bullied because of my height. Around this time, there wasn't a lot of, um, people that were tall. So I'm six foot, I was always tall and I grew pretty fast. So, you know, when someone is original and different and new to someone, they're just going to make fun of it because they don't accept it. So I was always bullied from Catholic school. Um, I'm going to say about fourth grade, I remember being bullied. So I was bullied from fourth grade all the way through high school, dude. Like it's, it has never stopped for me. So... Um, that's another reason why I wanted to move schools, um, because, uh, it was just, it was so much drama in that school and girls are catty. Girls are bitches. They're catty and they, they just, mm, they're, they're just catty. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, they crave drama. So I wasn't really about all that. So I just wanted to go to a new school, make a new name for myself. And that definitely didn't happen. So fifth grade, I went to public school for the first time and I was new and I came up with this idea that I wanted to be someone that I wasn't to be accepted. And I'm going to touch on that because I feel like that's what people do in high school um, or, you know, grammar school, like when they're trying to, when they're going somewhere new, they don't want to be themselves. They want to be someone else so they can feel accepted. So what I did which is like crazy that I even did this. Um, I told everyone that I was half Puerto Rican and half black, which is hundred percent not true. So I made my Puerto Rican friend and she was my childhood friend and we bonded because of that. And 
it's it's sad because we bonded off of something that wasn't even true so yeah i just i don't even know why and everyone always asks if i speak spanish and i said no because um you know my mom was spanish and she passed away so th this was this whole little fantasy dream that i put up in my head and that's who i was so moving on to middle school i don't remember too much um i just remember certain things i remember being close to a lot more people um and i was still trying to like discover myself so i don't really remember too much of middle school um, now I'm going to shift over to high school because this is exactly what I remember because high school sucks. If you're a teenager and you're watching this, high school sucks. It's literally just a glimpse part of your life. Like, don't even take it that serious because it's just drama. High school is drama. High school is bullshit and it sucks, but you're going to get through it. It's not going to, it's just, it's not going to define who you are. You're still trying to, to get to know yourself. You know what I mean? So don't. Take it with a grain of salt high school, literally. Like, learn what you need to learn, forget about the bullshit, and that's it. So, freshman year of high school. I think I've changed my style every year of high school because I was still trying to find who I was. So, freshman year of high school, I grew up in a white town. So, meaning, I, I think I had like a couple of black friends, but like, I was mostly hanging out with white people. So... I, being in a white neighborhood that I was in, um, I saw that everybody was wearing Uggs, everyone was wearing Abercrombie and & Fitch and Hollister, and I wanted to be a part of that group. So we couldn't really afford all of that. So my dad would just bring me Aeropostale, which was like the cheaper version of that. So he would, he would buy me some clothes. I got some Uggs, you know, I, I was fitting in. I thought I was fitting in. So... Freshman year of high school was hard for me because I was bullied a lot. Um, I was bullied. I was bullied mostly in my sophomore year, but freshman year, I remember I was being bullied. And what I was bullied for was my height. Um, one day I wore all yellow to school and people called me Big Bird. I had glasses that weren't cute. I was just bullied and I did not take it too well. Um, sophomore year of high school really hit me hard and junior year really hit me hard. Um, junior year, I was more into like the punk scene. Um, sophomore year, I was like transitioning from the preppy little Hollister girl to like punk. I was like slowly transitioning to that. And then junior year, I was punk. Senior year, I was like myself-ish. Um, so sophomore year, it was either sophomore or junior. It's, I'm like I said, I'm still kind of doing that shadow work to remember because I repressed so many of these memories because it just, I wasn't happy with it. So I just repressed it and that's not what you want to do. Um, I'm going to touch on that actually. So a lot of people think, um, going on to your spiritual journey and finding yourself. It's all sunshine, rainbow, and happiness. You have to remember that you have to go through the darkness to see the light. You have to go through all of the stuff that you don't like to get there. So like I said, I'm still working on it. It is a work in progress, and I think I'm going to work on it for the rest of my life. Um, but it's just, it's choosing to stay in the darkness or going through the darkness. So... I chose to stay in the darkness for a while, for a really long time. Um, and sophomore and junior year, I, this still gets me emotional because it's, uh, okay. Um, I started, trigger warning, I started to cut myself. Um, and I just remember that that was like a relief for me. I had these I had these thoughts in my head saying that I'm not going to be good enough. Um, you're not worth anything. They always make fun of you. Everything that they're saying is true. So me inflicting self-harm on myself made me feel better. I know that probably doesn't make any sense, um, but it did. And it helped silence all the thoughts because I was harming myself because of those thoughts. And then the thoughts would say, see, that's what you, that's what you do. That's that's how you validate what they're saying. So 
sophomore year was really hard for me. Um, this is also when I first discovered weed. And like I said, I'm being 100% honest. I smoke weed and I, I don't do it as much as I used to, but I do. And that's something that kind of calms me down from the day. Um, but this is when I started abusing it and started skipping school and doing all those things that, you know, teenagers do. But, um, yeah, that was the first time I discovered weed and I was actually pretty happy because I was around people that, um, made me feel comfortable, you know? Um, so from there, I, from junior year, I remember... This is going to be hard for me, too, because I literally have not talked to about this in a really long time. Um, this is another trigger warning. I remember I was on the phone with one of my friends and I was kind of just fed up because, like I said, I love how my dad raised me. I love how he didn't throw me out to anybody else. He wanted to, you know, raise me the best that he could. Um, but with work and his social life, he was never home in my, this is what I remember. Um, so like I said, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but he was never there. So I was very alone. I was very, I was sad, you know, I was really sad. I didn't have a mom. Um, you know, and it's, it's hard when you don't grow up with a mom, you know, you, you can't really talk about your period. You can't really talk about your feelings because your, your dads are great, but they're, Men have a hard time talking about their feelings. This is what I've noticed. Um, and this, like I said, this is my opinion. So it was hard. I was alone and I was just like, what am I even doing here? Why am I here? What is my purpose? And I just, I couldn't find a reason. So I went to the bathroom and I just took a handful of Advil because that was the only thing I had. And I was on my phone with my friend and I told him and I said, I just, before I called you, I just took a whole bunch of Advil because I just don't want to be here anymore. And he was terrified. He's like, why would you do that? Don't do something like that to yourself. So he talked to me the whole night. He made sure I didn't go to sleep. Um, so I didn't sleep at all that day. I probably slept for like maybe 20 minutes or something or 10 minutes. Like I don't remember sleeping that long. I remember I went to school and I wasn't feeling right. I was feeling so, so off. And I just felt like a zombie, you know, like I just felt like I was just floating through the school. I didn't feel like I was there. And my childhood friend, I actually, um, the one that I told you guys about before, I actually told her because she's known me for so long. I told her and I, and she was just like, are you kidding me? Like, why would you do that? You had to tell the teacher. And I was like, no, I don't want to tell the teacher. Like, I don't want to make this a big deal. Um, and she was just, she forced me. She forced me to tell my teacher. I remember I was in, I definitely think this was junior year because I remember taking sewing class and, um, she told me, she made me tell my sewing teacher and I felt uncomfortable. And I, I told her, I was just like, so this is what I did. And she freaked out, called the guidance counselor. Um, I was actually rushed out of school in a stretcher and I was going to the hospital. Like it was a big deal. It was a serious thing. Um, as it should be, you know, like I tried to, I tried to kill myself using pills. So, um, yeah, I, went to the hospital and not knowing that my aunt worked there, I saw my aunt and she was like, why would you do that? Like my family is very religious, so they don't understand any of this. They don't understand how I was feeling that they, they, I wasn't, I didn't feel comfortable talking to them about it because in my opinion, this is how I felt that they felt that God will fix everything. And I'm not saying that he does, but you need to work. You need to work for him to fix it. He can't just fix it and you not do anything. You know what I mean? So yeah, I was in the hospital and I remember one time at Thanksgiving, I tried to be myself around my family. And this is, I'm, I'm kind of skipping parts because this is how I'm remembering it too. Um, so I think I did, I think this event happened and then I took the Advil and then I was in the hospital. So it was kind of like a chain reaction. Um, so I remember I tried to be myself with my family and they did not accept me because I am bisexual still to this day. I am bisexual, even though I am dating a man and I am going to be with him for the rest of my life. I still consider myself bisexual. That's never going to change. So me knowing my family and how they are and they're so religious and everything, um, I 
wasn't accepted. Like I feel, I'm sorry, I was just checking to see if it's still recording. Um, I felt like I wasn't going to be accepted and it's, it's hard, you know, like around this time, a lot of people weren't bisexual, gay, open about it. So I always, when I was younger, I always felt that I was a little different and that's what it was. And I felt like I wasn't accepted that day. I remember that Thanksgiving, like everybody was just putting pressure on me because I was the youngest. Uh, and it was, it was just a lot, honestly, it was a lot that day that led me to the Advil story. And then I went to the hospital and then I had everybody rushing. My whole family came in there and they're like, we accept you. We don't want to see you do this, blah, blah, blah. And it's sad that it took that extreme for them to say that in my opinion, like I'm, I keep saying my opinion because I don't want to upset anybody. This is just how I feel. And if you are going through the same thing, like, trust me, I hear you. In my opinion, I don't think it's ever going to change um, because I don't know. I just, I've been through a lot. And now that it's a lot more open, I'm trying to be more open about it. It's still kind of hard for me because like I said, of what I've went through, but yeah, I, I feel you if you're going through the same thing. Trust me. I'll be here for you if nobody else is here for you. So that incident made me um, realize how much my family does love me and that they want me to be here. So um, through the hospital, since I tried to commit suicide, I had to be in this, um, I think it was outpatient because I was still going to school, so I couldn't be inpatient. So it was an outpatient group that I was in, and this is where I met my first girlfriend, like, first real girlfriend. I've dated girls before, but, like, she was, like, my real girlfriend. So I felt, I felt better because I was around people that had the same similarities as me, like cutting, bulimia, uh, anorexia, all of those things. So I felt more comfortable. And when I had my girlfriend, I felt that we, we were so like good together because like we, we had each other, you know what I mean? So, um, I remember that we did break up because at this time I didn't drive and she didn't drive. So we could never really meet together because she lived so far away. But yeah, so I've dealt with a lot of depression in my life. Um, it still, to this day, comes up. It's still going to be there, I think. I'm just treating it a different way. And I know little signs that I am depressed. Um, so I can kind of work through that. Um, so after high school, I kind of felt a little bit better because I was more myself. Like I said, senior year, I was more myself. Um, but still bullied through this whole experience. Like I, I don't think I, yeah, like I said, I stopped being bullied at the end of high school. So, um, it's hard, you know? And especially when you like, I think there was like three or four tall girls in my class. <laughs> like there wasn't a lot of us. So, um, yeah, being tall, being bisexual, being myself, like, having glasses, like, and then I got contacts and, and I got a weave and like, everyone's like, Oh my God, you look so good. But like, I had to change myself for them to accept me. It was just, it's not right. It shouldn't be like that. So that's, and all of that just kind of led to my depression and not having a mom. My dad wasn't really there. Like all of that led to depression. And at this point, I think I still was cutting myself even after, uh, after, the um inpatient and everything and i remember i even went to a therapist i went to a couple of therapists and i actually wanted to be put on um medicine because i just didn't feel right and i didn't want to deal with any of that i just wanted to be numb i remember i just wanted to be numb and when i took um i was finally prescribed zoloft and when I took it, I hated it so much. Like, I think I took it for about like two weeks and I just didn't want to do it anymore or a week. It wasn't, it wasn't that long. Um, so it didn't, it made me too numb. I remember like, I just, I didn't feel right on it at all. Um, so then after high school, I got into 
a couple of relationships. Um, I remember when I was a senior, I, or like after high school, sorry, like I said, it's still trying to come to me. I, this is like real, like I didn't plan what I was going to say in this video. So it's just coming out, uh, right now. Um, I remember I met this guy. This was my first boyfriend. I'm my first serious boyfriend because I've had a couple of boyfriends throughout the throughout high school. Um, I had one that was kind of serious, but that relationship was very, very abusive, not towards me, towards himself. So I felt like I had to be there for him because he was in the state that I was in. So even if I wanted to leave, like I had to stay because of him. So that relationship, like, I don't even know how it ended, honestly. Um, it was it was a lot to take on, honestly. And I think this was my sophomore year of high school. So we were in that relationship for a little while. He met my dad and everything, but I really wasn't allowed to have a boyfriend until I was 18 because my family was so strict, my, my dad. So... He like knew, but he didn't like want to know. So yeah. Um, okay. Anyway, back to after high school, I was with this guy and I didn't want to be with boys at all. I was like, guys suck. After that whole relationship I had, I was like, guys suck. I don't want to be with guys anymore. I'm a lesbian. Um, like I'm still trying to find myself. So I, I just didn't want to be with guys at all. So meeting this guy, he was like, oh, I can change you you're not a lesbian. Well, look what I can do to you. Blah, blah, blah. Like it was so annoying, but I mean, we started dating. So <laughs> I just, I, I don't know. Looking back at that, I was just like, ew, like change me really? Like what? Um, so we started dating, uh, for a little bit and I thought I was on cloud nine. Like he tra treated me so right. And then I found out that he cheated on me with this girl that I did not think was attractive. So I was really upset and to get him to stay kind of what my ex did to me, I said that I was going to harm myself so he could stay, which is not right at all. Like, I don't think you should do that to anybody. If they want to leave, let them leave. And then you can, you know, focus on yourself and get yourself prepared to take on that, you know? Um, so he stayed, but we were broken up like there was no getting him to stay and I was just upset because like I renounced boys I didn't want to be with boys anymore and then this guy came into my life and then he treated me right and then he cheated on me so it was just like like fuck man like really so I started self-harming again I actually stopped for a little bit because I was so happy with him um so I stopped um I started again because I just I was just like really like see this is why guys don't want to date you because you're too tall because you you don't know who you are like you're stupid that's why he cheated on you so all of those thoughts were in my head and it just it wasn't true but you know that's that's what I thought and um yeah so I dated another guy after that and kind of the same thing um, and in this point in time, I hopped from relationship to relationship to relationship. So I didn't have time to really process the relationship before. Sorry, if you hear a dog barking, um, that's my neighbor's dog downstairs. Um, so yeah, I didn't really get to process that. I just moved on to the next relationship and I was in that relationship for, I think two years, um, and two or three years and the relationship was good, but we also had a lot of growing to do so um yeah it lasted for two years and i remember i went to this party <laughs> i went to this party and i saw my exes before this ex if i'm making sense i'm not gonna say names so um I don't know, Gary is the first guy I dated and Jeff was the second. So I remember it was Gary's friend that I went to the party. I was supposed to go with Jeff, but for some reason, I think um, his sister was having a party and he wanted to make sure that everything was well, not well, but everything like was okay. 
So I was pissed. I was like, what the hell? Like, you're supposed to go with me to this party, and now you just canceled the same day? Like, it's, it's not right. So I was like, screw it. I'll just go by myself. Me being the Aquarius I am, the rebellious sign that I am, like, I'll just go by myself, whatever. So I went by myself, um, had a great time, saw people that I haven't seen since I've broken up with Gary, because I had a, I was friends with these people. So I went back home, and then jeff yelled at me they're like what are you doing you're gonna wake up the dogs like why are you turning the light on and i'm like why are you yelling at me i just got here like i was so excited to see you like screw that i'm gonna go back to the party where i had some fun so after jeff like kind of attacked me i didn't want to go back i was like whatever so i started hanging out with the other guy so i hit up jeff and i was like listen we can't be together anymore i didn't like how you treated me that last meeting whatever whatever so then we're gonna move on to Hank. So now I'm dating Hank. And like I said, relationship to relationship to relationship. So Hank, here is Hank. Me and Hank have been together for four years. This was my longest relationship before Travis. I'm gonna talk about Travis because I'm currently dating him. <laughs> um, so I was with Hank. Um, Hank has taught me a lot, let me tell you. So with Hank and his father moved to Pennsylvania. So he wanted to move to Pennsylvania. So I wanted to move to Pennsylvania. At this time I was going to the Art Institute in New York for fashion design. And then I switched I switched up because fashion design was a lot, honestly. It's, it's a lot, it's a process and I didn't have passion for it. Even though I was in um, sewing class, I didn't have any real passion for it, but when you're out of high school, you don't know what the hell you want to do. So I'm like, I guess I'll just do fashion since I like fashion. So I was in fashion design. Then I switched it to fashion merchandising. And then I convinced um, my dad to for me to move to PA because they have um, the Art Institute in Philly. And they have a bachelor's program. In New York, I was only doing the associate's program. So we moved down to... Um, PA. I'm 21. I remember because I celebrated my 21st birthday at Fridays. I remember exactly what I wore. I had this like leopard um, jacket on. I was cute. <laughs> um, so yeah, we I moved to PA. We lived with his father for a little bit and then we got our own place. Um, so yeah, me not processing all the stuff that happened before came up in this relationship. So I was self-flicting again and um it just it wasn't I wasn't happy honestly and I I feel bad because I was in that relationship for four years and I it wasn't it wasn't right I I did some things that I don't agree with that I reflected on that I you know I can't I don't know I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I can't be upset that it happened. It happened for a reason, but I I just, I wish I didn't have to put Hank through all of that stuff because of what I was feeling. Um, so me and Hank ended our relationship. I was actually engaged to Hank um, before we ended our relationship. Um, so I had to move I had to move with my aunt because I still was in school, so I couldn't just go back to New Jersey because that's gonna be a lot of traveling. So I moved in with my aunt. This was the first time, guys, that I sat by myself and I reflected on all of that shit, all of it. So um, my aunt had a basement that was like a room. So it was like my own little room and then they lived upstairs. So. I was down there and I could not handle it at all. I was sitting there and just with my thoughts and that's like, I couldn't handle it back then. So what I did was I, at work, I made a lot of friends. Um, I was working at BCBG at the time and I made a lot of friends. Uh, we went out a lot. Like I literally was never home because I didn't want to sit with my thoughts. And um, yeah, I was just out all the time being my crazy self. Um, I think I was like 23 at this time, 23. No, no, no. Cause we were together for, I don't know. I don't know timelines right now, but, uh, yeah, I was just out with my friends all the time. Um, and then I dated a couple of guys, didn't work out, wasn't serious. 
And then while I was in PA, I, me and Travis, Facebook friends, and um, I saw him. I was like, oh my God, he's so cute. Like, let me add him on Facebook. So we started talking. Um, we weren't like too serious. I kind of friend zoned him, as I say. I friend zoned him um, for about a year, I think, um, which is honestly, which is good because it helped me not hop to relationship to relationship. It gave me time. I wasn't really having time to myself, but when I couldn't go out, I had time to myself. So it really kind of helped me a little bit. Um, and then I got all these tattoos. This was literally when I lived in uh, Ambler, PA. This was that because I, w I don't know, I'm a rebel. And I was like, I want more tattoos and I got more tattoos. <laughs> so um, yeah, this, I love these tattoos because it just rem reminds me of that time where I was finding myself and I was going to school for myself. I was ready, I was excited. Um, and I do still have scars, um, but yeah, I still have scars from that and I don't, I used to hate them, but now I don't love them, but I'm still trying to like work on that. But it's just a reminder of like how crazy my fucking life was. And it's just a reminder to love yourself, you know? So yeah, me and Travis dated, um, and you know we we're happy we're i'm just i'm glad i got to deal with all that stuff before i met him because i feel like i wouldn't be with him right now um so anyway i said i wasn't gonna talk about my life but here i am it just kind of came out but <laughs> um let's talk about my yoga and spiritual journey because like i said my family is a christian and my whole life i was forced to love christianity and to be honest, it made me hate it. And if you're my family watching this, I'm I'm sorry to tell you this, but I can't be forced into something. Like I get I get it. People force like you're supposed to be forced not forced, but you're supposed to talk about the religion within your family. And it just made me hate it. Like I never really wanted to pray. I didn't really like god i didn't like any of that shit because like it was forced at me and i was just like whenever i went to church i was bored as hell and it just wasn't for me so quarantine happened this is where my journey comes in so quarantine happened and um before quarantine i was actually laid off from urban decay because they were restructuring so i was laid off um and then quarantine happened so i was just like fuck i got laid off quarantine happened we're in lockdown i can't do shit I'm literally sitting on the couch eating chips, like just watching TV, getting fat, not working out, not stretching my body, not moving, not doing anything, literally waking up at whatever time, chilling in my PJs, laying on the couch, watching TV, eating chips. So those thoughts started to come back. You got laid off of your job. You're not worth it. Um, you can't go anywhere like you're trapped in this house and it's just all those thoughts came back i didn't self-harm but i really was depressed like i was very very depressed um and if you know me i love to work like not love to work but i'm i'm always trying to work to keep myself busy like i started working i think when i was like 16. um so yeah i was out of work i've never been on unemployment before so it was all new to me and um, a friend reached out and she was like, you should try yoga. You should try working out. You should try doing this, that, and this. And I've had a couple people tell me about yoga and working out and stuff. And I was just like, I used to work out. Um, I used to work out not a lot, but I was always on and off and I was on diets and I was on all the other crap, but that's a whole nother video we can talk about if you want. Um, so she was like, yeah, try yoga, blah, blah, blah. I was like, fine, let me just give it a shot. So we actually did it together, which was better because if I was going to do it by myself, like I was not going to do it. So the fact that we did it together kind of helped. And then I started doing it on my own and I found all these free YouTube videos from yoga classes. And I was just like, holy crap, like I really like what this is doing to my body because I have really bad sciatica and I was laying on the couch. I didn't even feel it, but Whenever I get up, like it would take me a while because my back would kill me, like to the point where I couldn't even really move. So the fact that yoga was like made me realize about it because I was just like, oh, whatever, it's just my back. Like, and then I started researching and then I realized what I had and hold on. 
Um, sorry, Travis just <laughs> just walked out, so I kind of like got awkward. Um, <laughs> but oh my god, what was I saying? Um, yeah, so I was like, oh my god, I love what this is doing to me, and it just made me not be depressed anymore. It made me have all this energy and be positive. So I wanted to share that with the world. I was like, you know, we're in this quarantine right now. I think people really need this. So I started to, on my Instagram, you'll see, I started to do like the chakra cleanses and stuff. I started transitioning from being like a glam makeup artist to like pushing more into working out and yoga and stuff. So honestly, quarantine was not like a blessing, but it really helped me realize what I'm on this earth for, like what my purpose is, because I always want to be of service. And that's like with makeup, um, even when I was with fashion, I always worked retail and I always wanted to help people make them feel beautiful. So I think that this is what I was called to do especially because of my past and my history and everything, you know? So I think that yoga has really, it changed my life and it's still changing my life. And I'm still going on a journey. Like I said, I started yoga teacher training. So that's like a whole nother journey that I'm going to be going on. But even with the little amount of time that has been practicing yoga, I've felt so much like joy and appreciation and gratitude. And it's like, I've never felt that before, like ever in my life. So I think that I don't know this is just this is just the beginning and I'm, I'm just excited I'm really excited and just me doing the poses and stuff like I wanted to get more into like the spiritual aspect of it so I started doing meditation and I started doing um, like singing uh, not singing, uh, sound baths and I started going to ceremonies and stuff like that I started really investing in myself because I felt so so good so that was it. <laughs> That's like my whole journey. And like where I am now, like I said, I'm doing um, the teacher training and that's like a whole nother thing so if you guys want a video on that um i did have someone suggest on instagram to do like a day in the life of a, a yoga teacher trainer um and i will talk about the school and everything if you want me to just give this video a thumbs up so i know um so i could do that but yeah that's my life that's everything um probably missing some things but that's like main points of what i wanted to share with you um, if you are going through this, like, I'm really sorry that you're going through it, but don't, don't get stuck in the darkness like I did for such a long time. Like, but yeah, that's, that's all I wanted to talk about with you guys. Like I said, if you have a similar story, reach out to me, send me an email. I'll leave it down in the description. DM me. I'll leave my Instagram as well. Um, I'm here for you. If nobody else is there for you, I'm here for you, honestly, because I, I know what you're going through. And if you are in high school, like, fuck it fuck high school, learn what you need to learn and then get the fuck out. Like it's, everyone thinks it's the highlight of your life. It's really not. Even college is not the highlight of your life. Like just make sure you have time for yourself. Make sure you do some self care. Like I always have like a self care Sunday, which I am working now on Sunday. So I try to do as much as I can, but I make sure I wash my hair. I give myself a mask. I shave, you know, I do all things for myself just like treat yourself you have to treat yourself and show yourself that you're worth it because you are you're worth everything and I, I just appreciate you guys wanting to know my journey and um, I hope that it has helped you in any type of way and I love you guys I love you guys so so much and I'm sorry that I have been MIA for a little bit but I have been trying to figure out this whole full-time work schedule and um, school and YouTube. So now I'm only gonna be posting one day a week, but I'm gonna stick to it. I have some videos coming out for you guys. I know I keep saying that, but I promise that I'm gonna keep my promise this time because um, I do have some videos that I wanna do um, for yoga and like I have some food videos that you guys requested. So yeah, um, I hope you guys like this video. I'm sorry if it's like so super long. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn your little notification bell on so you know whenever I post a new video. And like this video if you do like it, if you wanna see more journey videos, cause I have stories for days. <laughs> I literally do. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you guys again for clicking on this video and being interested in my journey. And I hope you have the best rest of the week you can have. <laughs> Bye, guys.